You have acquired the robe. Keep it, officer. It looks good on you. His hands are clean and well manicured. This is a man who knows the importance of appearances. My name is Charles Vildroin, and I am an official with the coalition government. I work for the Institute of Price Stability on assignment from Sur la Clé. I heard you talking to my friend outside. Very good. Super. I am here to assist you in any way possible. Ask me about the hanging. Hanging? What's a drag? He seems like a cultured gentleman. You should ask him about the finer things. Oh, we got it from an atelier in the East Delta Commerce Center. Personally, I think it's a little culturally insensitive, but the material is great. Sadly, the shop is now out of business. That's really all I can tell you about it. The lieutenant takes out his notebook and nods to you to proceed. I'm sorry to say I did, officer. Easy, detective. No need to jump to conclusions. Officer, it's very difficult to describe what I saw that night. It was so surreal to me, like in a play. He holds out his hands and blossoms his fingers, like a drama teacher set in the scene. What do you mean, like in a play? It was just so strange. I could barely comprehend what was happening. I was on the balcony when it happened, getting some fresh air. I remember that first they came in, carrying what looked like a body. And then I saw all the surrounding windows go dead, one by one. That's when I understood. I should not be seeing this. Sounds like the victim was unconscious, or at least incapacitated. Well done, detective. I couldn't tell you exactly. Less than ten. Maybe eight? The lieutenant sends you a sharp look at the mention of that number. That's a giant you're describing. No, they were all quite human. As far as I could tell. I went back inside. Were you able to see anything from inside? Officer, the yard was pitch black. There was nothing to see, but I could still hear their voices. They were threatening to kill that poor man. All men, I presume. But again, I couldn't see very clearly. I believe they were mostly white, though I believe I saw two Aeropagites among them. And I am quite certain that one spoke with a mask accent. Well, that's the strangest part, officer. Nothing happened. It was oddly quiet for a public lynching. Eventually, their shouts died down, and that was all. There were no gunshots, no celebratory shouts, no anything. I'm afraid I don't have anything else to add. About what time was all this happening, approximately? All I can say is that it was late. No, I didn't see the corpse until the following day. It seems this wasn't the break you were hoping for. I think we have everything we need. Thank you for talking to us, Mr. Villodroin. Of course. Anything I can do to assist the RCA. Ah, my friend. My friend is a good young man. His family immigrated here from Kedra, and life has not been easy for him. But he understands the importance of education. He has taken his future into his own hands, and that's all that matters. Sorry, who? But I told you, officer. He's a bright young man here to pursue his education. Education is the foundation of our future, especially the arts. It is a cornerstone of our civilization. Officer, you have to understand. I can't give you his personal information. I'm sure you have your own methods and databases, right? Please don't put me in this situation. He's deeply enmeshed in the study of the fine arts, yes. As though you weren't envious enough of the boy as is. He's a truly free spirit. She likes all- I'm all ears. Of a moment. Do you have everything you need from me? I'm afraid we won't have the chance to speak again once you leave. Sure, go ahead. It's a beautiful space. Let-
Looks like the circus left town, but the clowns are still here. A witness? You ain't got shit. The locals would never come to you with this. That's just Coptactis Titus. Next, he's gonna tell you one of us already roll on the others, and is in witness protection. Well, let's hear it then. Who is your mystery fella? He's not alarmed by the sudden appearance of a witness, but he is surprised. This goes without saying, but nonetheless, don't give out his name. Yeah, right. Like we wouldn't know if an M.I. plant was in our town. Nice try, right? M.I. is short for Moral Intern. I've seen this shit a million times, Titus. Fly fishing. They are desperate. The last copper. What wacky claims did he make? Arab guy? <laughs> Boss, I think he's trying to save me and Theo. Well, yeah. What is confusing you? Eugene, Theo, and Elaine were there too. I already told you. We were all there. It's you assholes that feel the need to go around like a fucking brass band. The Hardy Boys are dead silent. Yeah. It's like they put cowbells on you before they send you to the streets. What's with the cowbells, policemen? They're avoiding having to answer this question. We were drinking, weren't we guys? I hit the bottle hard. I was drunk as fuck. Right. I'm convinced, Glenn. Nothing off here. Just a regular hanging. Those flaccid M.I. cocks with their culture language. Everything's a surreal play or sublime whatever. Doesn't mean anything. It means the whole scene was long and drawn out. Like it was from a film. What is this fella's problem? Sorry we didn't make it more action-packed. It wasn't the first thing on our minds, you see? Chunky, it's Chunky, right? I thought there's something wrong about the lynching story. Now I know there was. You don't know shit. I know you are lying, Chunky. Some witness. I pulled the same shit. Came up with some shit. Then went and said it to people. You don't have to go to school for shit. I never went to school and I'm doing great. You're doing a hell of a job, man. Hell of a job. So much bluster to hide the fact that they're uncomfortable with you having this info. You have so many bad options ruled out, it's insane. There is no way in the world you won't do it this time. You know what? You guys must be the cops. Because this is what cops do, right? Live in a bar, sit on their fat asses like they own the place, while the neighborhood goes to shit. Corpses hang from trees, kids shoot up. Hey, we don't have to fucking take this shit. Glenn. Everyone shut up! Fuck you, man! You didn't see the place before we got here. Fucking... Graffito everywhere! Congratulations on the graffito removal. All I see is you sitting around talking about Monica's titties while there's a rape victim. So what? What do you want from me? We took care of that fuck. Don't let him drink that. One more push. Quick. Titus? She stops mid-sentence. That's it. You, you got him. He's going to give it up, but on his terms. You want to help her, cop? Fine. I'm going to let you help her, but you treat her with respect. If you don't, if you question her, harass her. A freight train of pain, buddy. What is her name? Lasia. I'm on you. She's staying here at the Whirling in Rags, a real pretty one. Silvery jumpsuit, blonde. That's Amonju with an O. Shit. The girl. The girl upstairs? That can't be her. She knows you drank so hard you forgot you were a cop. 
Sure, why not? You've probably seen her. You inexplicably add cool after the victim's name, with your eyes bulging like some wild beast. Your fingers are fidgeting and sweat starts forming on your brow as Titus looks at you oddly. I don't understand what's so cool here. Nothing. We just have a few more questions. Then we'll be on our way. Calm. Normal. Try to forget this little hiccup. Relationship? There was no fucking relationship. He raped her. That's their relationship. It was like that karaoke incident all over again. Or like some of the other girls he was harassing. Okay, enough. All of this is irrelevant to your stated investigation. He did it before we killed him. He's not gonna do it again. So what does it matter? It would help if we establish a timeline. Alright. Two weeks, maybe? I don't know. I need another beer. Here you go, boss. Remember what I said. Officer, what was that? You looked strange when he mentioned the assault victim's name. Do you know that woman? Is there something I should know before we talk to her? Whatever you do, don't say the first thing. So she overheard you? Or did you party together? Anything else? Okay, that's manageable. That's clearly your interrogation technique. Anything else? Understood. You were not in good shape on Monday. We'll be alright, Lieutenant. This is nothing. You feel fortified by his assurance. It's going to be alright. Is it though? Nothing? You're still in for a bumpy ride here. Try not to mess it up. This is the police. Can we come in? Come on up. The door is open. I'm drying my hair. Sounds like it's coming from upstairs somewhere. You could snoop around before going up. This medicine cabinet is full of wares. Sheets of pills haphazardly stacked one on top of the other. There's also a toothbrush somewhere in there. Pharmaceuticals line the shelves, sheet upon sheet of pill bottle next to pill bottle. Acetylic acid, APAP, eye drops, blood thinners. Among some foreign, probably Mycenaean or Godvaldian, marked red blister packs you find. What do you find? This is going to take a little know-how. <laughs> this medicine cabinet is stocked with a bright orange bottle with preptide stamped on it. In sunny, happy letters. Jackpot, baby. That's the stuff you're looking for. 
your palms begin to sweat just holding that little plastic container. This medicine cabinet is stopped. There it is. The orange sun wearing blister pack. Silently, the bottle slides into your palm. Then, as you turn, into your pocket. It feels so sleek and beautiful. You got it. Pill bottles rattle like bones as you search the cabinet. Paracetamol. Something in a foreign language you can't read. Behind them, an unusually shaped nasal spray. Its label reads, Necra. Necra? This is used to treat opioid overdoses. Always handy to have around. Interesting. That's used for diamorphine overdoses. It's been used quite a lot, but not for scrubbing blood of towels. Or anything else interesting, it seems. This window is pristine on the inside, unlike the one next to it. Light from the desk lamp reflects off the glass in an untarnished. This window is pristine on the inside, smooth as ice. There are spots of mud and rain on the outside, even smudges. But the surface of the window is clear from the inside. No chips, no hairline fractures. Following your lead, the lieutenant leans in closer to inspect the surface. Looks like it, yes. Just as you look at the flowers, a gust of wind raises them from the roof, picking them up in the air. You catch a single white flower between your fingers. The rest fly off into the wind. It's a Maybell. The young woman looks at the Maybell in your hand. Just a glance, then takes a drag of her cigarette. The lieutenant gives you an acknowledging little nod. Welcome to the roof. Her hair is still slick from the shower. Below her silvery jumpsuit, an athletic young body, built long and lean. I'm sorry for the mess down there. The cleaning lady hasn't come by in days. I'm beginning to wonder if she ever will. Oh yes, legends of room number one have made their way around the building. They say a portal to hell has opened in there. They also say that's why the cleaning lady quit. Because of the inferno. I'm Kim Kitsuragi. I'm a detective from Prison 57. I believe you have already met my colleague from Prison 41. Have I ever? This is the biggest fan of ostentatious orchestrations I have seen in my life. And I have seen a few. Oh yeah. Life gets hard, but we go on. The chorus of the 35 single, megaphoning the entire human race, instills you with the fuck it all swagger that prompts one to plow into grannies on your morning stroll. That is not actually what a police siren sounds like. Miss, we are investigating the murder of the man down there. The people who put him there have asked us to talk to you. Ah, oh, I see. What could she be thinking of? It's hard to say. Her shoulders are relaxed, her eyes on the cigarette. It's like she's disappointed this wasn't about more entertaining matters. Clausier Amondu. Same name that Titus gave you. It sounds Oranese, as does her accent. Her birthmarks also signal Oranje. 
You don't know why, but Orani's girls tend to come speckled with them. I'm afraid you can't, officer. Why is that? Because it's buried in a sealed plastic bag at an undisclosed location on the coast, along with cash and airline tickets. Thank you for your candor. Why? I say so in your tourist brochure. Keep travel documents away from your person when west of the river. Look, officers. I like this place. But I don't want to be stuck wandering the city like a ghost after being robbed of my travel documents. I don't want to become an indentured servant in a brothel on Boogie Street. And I don't want my relatives to pay the ransom. There are plenty of other reasons for hiding your documents from the law. It's also why I hid it. Why yes? I'm an unpopular girl. There are people back home who don't like me. If they show up. I'm in a hurry. The kind of hurry where you can't afford to not find your documents. But don't worry. This has nothing to do with your investigation. If I were to lie to you, I would come up with a more mainstream name than Clausia Mondu. It's a weird name. She seems to be telling the truth, sire. Okie dokie. If any of this made her nervous, it certainly doesn't show in her expression or her movements. Something stupid. Orani's lit. Orani's literature. It's what I studied at the university. Back to me. Nothing. I do nothing with it. Cool. I've made more money by just being than I have with Orani's lit. Many things. A roller skating instructor, a secretary, Miss Orania 37. Of course she won a beauty pageant. She's very symmetrical. The record, so official. She looks at the dried petals in your palm, then lightly touches one with her fingernail. Chipped white polish covers the nail. It's long and sharp, like a mini dagger. The petal crumbles on contact. Pretty. Looks like a dried Maybell. Is that the one you caught? Sambo style? A martial art, sir. Is that it? Samurai boxing, or Sambo. Graceful martial arts stuff. Why was there a flower on the roof? I don't know, officer. Because of the wind? It's a bit early in the morning for rate, isn't it? Is it? It is evening. Time flies, man. Yeah... I'm gonna go with not rate. I don't want to say that shit about him. By him, she must mean the victim. Tell them it's not my style. They'll have to, you know, if they want to jazz up the charges, they'll have to get someone more, uh, rapeable. It's all very organic. Her mannerisms, her movements. If she's acting, she's quite gifted. By they, she means the Hardy Boys. Are you saying that you were asked to tell us you were assaulted? Not explicitly, but I understood what they meant. It wouldn't hurt to spice things up a bit. Some assault and battery. Sexual assault, maybe. It was clear the latter would be spicier. Pretty much. Warming them. We partied. With all due respect, sir, I think we partied a little harder than that. Oh, it is. You're still alive. What did you do when you partied? We drank, sir. A lot. For weeks, basically. We had that effect on each other. We made each other drink harder. That's why I liked him. What else? Stimulants. Speed also has that effect. Making you drink harder. And then drinking harder makes you do more speed. It's quite the combination. We also had sex. I guess you can say that, yes. A bit. Lovers is such an emotional word. 
But there was something there. We did enough drugs for there to be. How did you two meet? Downstairs. At the bar. He was on some sort of assignment. Uh, a military man, as you probably know. Had a cool scary scar. When was this? A month ago? Something like that. Oh yes. I've had a great view. From the roof. Out of the bathroom window. In my dreams. A bitter cringe. It hurts. You look to the lieutenant. He takes a small step closer. You called us, DRCM. Yes. Jackpot. I made it. And I would appreciate it if you didn't tell everyone. In Martinez, they call it snitching. Reporting crimes is confidential in Ravachot, miss. I didn't exactly disguise it. I just muffled the mic and nicked the landline a little. With nail clippers. And I diverted some radio fuzz into it. Into the cold wire. So, she's God's mystery foam cutter. Did I? Fuck. I didn't mean to. I had no idea what I was doing. Jigsaw falling into place. This is satisfying. Good catch. I appreciate the symmetry. Still, that's pretty clever tempering. Simple and clever. Crossing the lines like that. Thanks. She looks a bit like a little girl who's just been complimented on her bike repair skills. I don't know, sir. It was stupid. I was drunk, too. I was probably afraid the union was listening in. Locals say they have ears in the wires. We're not entirely convinced about that answer, but okay, let it slide. Pushing won't help here. Thank you for making the call, miss. It was the right thing to do. I didn't want to, sir. But if I hadn't, he'd still be hanging there. He had something to do with the strike. One has been roiling since I got here. Rotten timing. But you probably know all about it. And his role in this strike was... what? I think he was in a security detail. He was ex-military, worked for Wild Pines, and against the Union. We didn't discuss work much, if you know what I mean. But I understood it was dangerous. And they lynched him for it? She nods. I'm 89% sure. You know how it is. Do you? Hmm. Maybe you don't know. There are numerous cigarette burns on those silvery scales. Easy to see now that you're closer. In conclusion, officer, I'm gonna go with a mild to medium not raped here. Let me make this 100% clear then, officer. I was not sexually assaulted. Would I be as flippant if I had been? I'm sorry, I can't do it. Not right now. Later, maybe. I keep seeing him. Like he is now. I can't talk about it. I don't know. Hair? I know it's difficult, miss. We can return to it later. They're frequent guests. Downstairs. They have a booth for union members. Over drinks. It's been a long, boring winter. A little, yeah. Like you partied with the deceased? No. Not as hard. I'm sorry to have to ask this, but have you had a physical relationship with any of the Hardy Boys? I have. Which ones, sir? I don't remember precisely. Titus, obviously. But as I said, it's been a long winter. She breathes a silvery sigh of relief and weariness. The air on the roof feels humid. Should we head by downstairs, officer? We may have things to discuss there. She nods. Silvery cigarette fumes disappear into her mouth. Why not? Looks like we have more to discuss with those so-called hardy boys. Half their reasoning just went out the window. Nothing will make them respect the RCM, but it will disrupt the game they prepared for us. We just tripped off one layer of whatever it is, 
Her decision to not corroborate their story was definitely not part of the plan. What else could she have done? Lie? She saw there was no way to lie and get away with it. You would have caught it. If not you, then me. It was a smart move from her. You think so? Being candid is the best way to lie. The appearance of candor with some facts thrown in draws attention away from whatever one chooses to omit. She may be trying to control the pace of the investigation. Anyway, we should move. I suspect our inquiries will bring us back here soon enough. The same small, heavy door. No lock in sight. I don't know, Lieutenant Euphrater. It is not the first closed door we found in this building. There is also your mysterious blue kitchen door. I don't know. The further we get, the more this building seems to be tied to the case. Below, the hostile cafeteria creaks and groans under your added weight. A skeleton of composite support beams and cantilevers. A dull thump. Somewhere inside, a wind brace rattles from the imperceptible motion of the building. The vigilantes, the cadaver, and a number of people connected to the case are in or around this building. This door is part of it. It's not unimportant. No, still a mini investigation. It's barred from the inside. You hear the bar rattle in the brackets. Sounds like it's heavy too. Very sturdy. Must be something valuable inside to go through the trouble of protecting it. The door is very sturdy indeed. This window. It's getting late and it's snowing. Time to call it a day. Good night, officer. We'll meet in front of the shack in the morning. A brisk coastal wind still howls against the window of the shack. Occasionally, the waves crawl in under the foundation, producing a low hum. The room feels muffled, like you pulled your hat over your ears. Outside, it is cold and windy, but you're inside, and it feels safe and warm. What is this place to you?
Waves crash onto the beach, drown in the reeds. Far to the south, a congregation gathers to a soup kitchen in a shelter for the homeless. An old woman gives out knitted scarves for free. This could have been you. This could still be you. A down on his luck nobody trying to survive. Outside, the howl of the wind has picked up. The waves crash against the stilts again. It's as if you think the thought, but in someone else's voice. Look under the floorboards. The bed is comforting. Across the room, the heating system hums its soft lullaby. The mattress feels soft and sheets warm. It only takes you moments for the world to fall away. <laughs> Thoughts, baby. A million little lights in the dark. You're one fine instrument, brother. All those faces and all those names. All that laughter and screaming and scheming around. Every corner and every street. Recorded in you forever on Faraday. No, you're spinning tapes at the discotheque. The grey discotheque. The great unceasing disco of the mind. The flash. The bang. The endless learning experience. On and on it goes. For untold hours. At the disco where you first asked her to dance. Rising. Rising above the dark curvature, the great wingspan of sleep, studded with stars. Behold, there are millions of them down there. The first time, the last time, the smoke in her mouth, the plotted flowers, the faces, Turning, changing. It's the world, Harry boy, and you're made of it. Every day you're out there, you make more of yourself from it. I'm afraid you can't be unmade now. You can never forget this shit. Beautiful. It's stuck on loop, whirling, spitting out words and images. You're the son of the world again. Harrister, a ceaseless agent. Picking up litter and old newspapers. Collecting your little bubblegum wrappers and idiotic picture postcards. Meaningless, meaningless keepsake. Reading your awful letters and recalling things, aren't you? The endless names of the world. An address book you are. The map of a city. You'll go insane if you keep going like this. One more day and you'll be in the loony bin. I just know you will. And for what, brother man? For the working class. For the money, baby. Solving your little crossword puzzles. Doing your tasks. Crossing names off lists. Trying to become some sort of world detector. It won't make it okay. It won't put smoke back in her mouth. He's got no idea what he's in for. Cause only love can break your heart 
Beep, beep, beep. The alarm is ringing, Harry. The disco circus goes on and on. You barely slept three hours last night. Do it for the wind. Do it for the picture puzzle. Put it all together. Solve the world. One conversation at a time. Rise and shine, comrade. It's time to get to work. Despite all the thinking you've been doing, only 0.0001% of communism has been built. It's too great a task to undertake alone. You're going to have to get organized. It's good that your personal business is in order, but we're talking about political matters of world historical import here. You must seek out your revolutionary brothers and sisters. Find out how much communism they've built. Then together, maybe you'll be able to build as much as 0.0002% of communism. But it won't be easy. Decades of persecution by coalition authorities have driven the remaining communists of Martinez underground. Just between us, you may want to lay off this, grind up the bourgeoisie stuff. It's a bit off-putting, even to fellow communists. Let your nose guide you, detective. No, we meant your nose, as in that swollen muck detector in the center of your face. It just happens to be perfectly calibrated for sensing communists. We really have no idea what they're talking about. There's no linkage between ideology and olfaction. Failure. It's a smell you know all too well. Simultaneously repulsive and yet darkly appealing. Musty with a sharp tang, but also a remnant of lost sweetness. Like a rotting mango that's been swaddled in a coat from your grandfather's attic. What you're smelling is your own body odor, of course. Nothing a shower and change of clothes couldn't fix. People sometimes complain there are no real communists left in Martinez, but you can smell their presence. They're out there, waiting for you to join them. Incidentally, during the waning days of the anti-centennial revolution, a number of Revacholian communards constructed elaborate hideouts in abandoned root cellars, hollowed out tree trunks, and even residential sewage tanks. This latter phenomenon gave rise to the early anti-communist slogan, the future's bright when you flush out the white. First, you'll have to locate the remaining communists in Martinez. When you get near to someone with revolutionary potential, your nose will give you the signal to establish contact. Again, no, it won't. Any olfactory response you perceive will be strictly psychosomatic. Judging from the bust of Krasmazov and other revolutionary paraphernalia you discovered, it seems that the Capeside Apartments may be a hotbed of communist activity. You'll discuss the monumental world historical task that lies before you. You'll engage in rigorous and spirited debates about Mazovian theory and practice, but mostly you'll probably complain about other communists. Not at all. Complaining about other communists is one of the most important parts of being a communist. Here we go. Wake, brave worker. Tis no time for bed. Fight till there's no slaves below and no masters overhead. You see a bowl of water. The water reflect you almost look like. An old mirror hangs on the wall. You see your reflection in it.
Yes? The lieutenant's posture becomes rigid and uncomfortable as you lean forward and sniff the area just above his shoulder blade. The lieutenant is fastidious as a cat in matters of his personal upkeep. And yet, in the folds of his jacket, you can just perceive the stale and acrid traces of oil rags, transmission fluid, and brake pads. Wait, wait. There's something else there. Something that sets your GABA receptors aflutter. The lieutenant's aftershave, a common drugstore brand. Strong hints of pine needle. But what sort of ideological picture do these smells paint? Tough to say. Do you need something, detective? It's nothing fancy, just plain old Tiger Super Special. I do like the way it tingles though. It's the only part of shaving I actually look forward to. Was there something else you wish to discuss? The loot, the lieutenant, wait, wait, the lieutenant, but... Do you need something, detective? I do like to hang around the motor pool every now and then, but that doesn't make me a mechanic. Sort of like how hanging around the liquor store hasn't made you into a master distiller. My apologies, detective. I couldn't resist. Was there something else you wish to discuss? <laughs>